Hi, my name is April and I have this really interesting thing that happens where my chest gets really red. I wanted to start a YouTube channel that was incredibly vulnerable. I have other things that I do. I have other channels that I've worked on and I'm usually in full makeup and a high collared shirt just so that I can feel over the top confident and get out what I need to say. But today I could not shake this idea that maybe it was time to come face to face with you and with myself. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am 34 years old. I am a wife. I've been married for 14 years. I'm a mother. I have a 12 year old girl and a six year old boy. I am an executive at a company. I oversee the after sales operations at a company. I'm a writer. I enjoy being outside. I love to exercise. In the past um, almost two years, I've lost over 35 pounds and I try to maintain a healthy lifestyle with working out multiple times throughout the week. Um, so this is a little bit of the backdrop about me. So when I was around 20, I started going to church. Before that, I never had any issues with confidence um, besides just normal, you know, teenage stuff, but never had issues with confidence. And when I was 20, um, it's right around the time that I met my husband, a little bit before that, and then I started going to church. Once I started going to church, this weird thing started happening to my neck and my chest where I would get these splotches. I, th I think that it started because I always kind of lived my life YOLO. And then when I started going to church, I became incredibly aware that something was wrong with me. And I think that in my mind, I psychologically believe that you are judging me, people are judging me, I don't want them to see the real me because I don't want to go to hell or be judged as a Christian because I'm not worthy or good or whatever the case may be. So I put on this act and constantly tried to just cover up who I actually was. So um, this didn't get really bad until um, probably, Let's see, so when I was 26, I went through a, a year of debilitating anxiety and depression. It was like my old life was going away, a new life was emerging, and I wasn't a child anymore. I, I, you know, I was already a mother, I was already married, I already worked in the corporate world, but I just felt like there was like an old part of me that was separating off from this newer part of me. And so I spun into anxiety and depression. Crazy, I know. Um, to the point to where I thought to end my life was the solution. I did not act out a plan, but the thoughts were definitely there. So a year of anxiety and depression, heavily involved in ministry in the church, and I just felt like I was climbing to the top and I meant and felt everything about the Lord Jesus with all my heart. Um, I broke away from all my old friends and just, just dove headfirst into this Christian lifestyle. Again, did not realize that I was basically suppressing everything that I was. And at the same time, I'm in the corporate world trying to impress the people who hold the power to give me higher position and more money and respect and all of those things. So I have this facade over here and this facade over here. And of course, I don't realize this. This is just life. You think you're just doing this. Um, and then um, I did notice that I would get really insecure. I never was like insecure. I was super confident and had a lot of friends and just really enjoyed my life until um, I started going to church. And then I just felt like I was trying to belong somewhere and fit in somewhere. And so um, I did. I do feel like, like I got into ministry. I was doing things on my own. I felt like I had a circle, but it never really felt genuine. And I don't ever feel like I could really be myself. And um, so anyway, let's fast forward, have depression, anxiety. I start working through that stuff. Um, I guess for a year, my adrenals were shot. So everything was in fight or flight all the time. And I, my nervous system just reacted to that. And I think physiologically and psychologically took on when this happens, this is what your body is gonna do. Because um, my functional neurologist told me, and this is not even bad right now, but my functional neurologist told me that this is just the blood vessels um, under the skin, let's see if we can get just the blood vessels under the skin. Um, 
this this is just I just took a shower and washed my face I just feel like if I was gonna come here and be incredibly vulnerable this is how I wanted to start it I don't think they'll all be like this I just was gonna do a video today and I was tired and I went got in the shower and I was preparing for bed and I was like I gotta go do this video today so here we are all of, I wanted to be able to talk to you like like I would my husband I'm so comfortable with him and looking like this in front of him, I don't even think about it. If I was with um, someone who's super close to me, I could sit and talk like this and not even have two second thoughts about myself right now. So so anyway, um, my functional neurologist told me these are just the blood vessels under the skin and my skin is just really um, translucent and just shows it and then it'll adjust itself and life will go on. He told me it's no big deal. But the thing is though, is that um, a couple of years ago, I worked under a boss who, if this started to happen, the first thing he would say is, did I upset you? Is something, is something wrong? Are you okay? And I became so aware that that was happening throughout the day and no one had ever really pointed out. I think every once in a while somebody would be like, are you okay? Are you really red? Are you having a reaction? But he did it in such a way, I think, to actually gain that control over my confidence. There's a long story and backdrop to that particular boss, but but he would continuously point it out and then laugh. And then I would laugh with him because I'd be like, whatever, I don't even care. But it still embedded itself into my body along with my shot nervous system from that year of debilitating anxiety and depression where I have to get acupuncture and I have to um, get chiropractic adjustments and breathing techniques and all these things to really calm my system down. So working with that boss and him pointing that out, I just realized that something is not right. So I talked to my doctor and of course, everybody says everything's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And I talked to my doctor, and um, and she, you know, she says you're totally ADHD and you are unmedicated, but you're an adult and you've learned to cope. So just go with it. And I'm like, okay, that's great and all, but the big thing is, is that for the past three years, this has gotten worse and worse, and it just happens. So people would assume you're upset you're fearful, you're anxious. That's what they assume that that would be. But I wanted to make this video today and I think it really struck me today to talk about this because anytime I've ever done any research on red splotchy chest, there's a little bit of information that comes up but nothing that's really promising. And it's like, take beta blockers, that works. Uh, didn't work for me, use some sort of cream, go see a dermatologist, it's rosacea. Rosacea, is that it? It's rosacea, it's not rosacea. It's uh, social anxiety and all these other things, but nobody really has answers for it. And doctors really haven't been able to be much of a help. And, I, and honestly, I haven't been seeking out a lot of medical attention for it because normally, especially in my position at work, I'm in a, an executive level role. So I'm in meetings all the time. I, I publicly speak a lot. The thing for me is that this will happen when I'm publicly speaking. And again, this is not even bad. I was hoping that coming and being like, this is all me right here, right now, that this would just like explode and, and it's not right now really badly. So, um, and, and I don't know if you can tell, like I'm kind of on the verge of like tears because one of the things that I tell people a lot is whatever it is that makes you nervous, whatever it is that you are so afraid of, whatever it is that you are resisting, resisting makes it worse. You need to run head first into whatever it is that scares you so badly. And I don't know why this scares me so badly. I've done a lot of inner work and a lot of psychological help for myself. And there's a lot of things I just don't give a shit about. And it's just something about being called out on, is something wrong with you? Are you okay? And there's so much more in my story and I'll get into more of that and, and my anxiety story and how that all how that all happened in other videos. but. But I think a big culprit for me is that there is something wrong with you. And so when it has been pointed out, there's something wrong with you. Everything in my nervous system just goes <laughs> like, ah, something's wrong. But on the other side of that, the way my adrenals react to my body. So if I go from um, a cooler body temperature to a hot body temperature really fast, my body will react like crazy. So that's if the sun is shining on me, if I'm laughing really hard, like if I was just normal, steady body temperature and then all of a sudden I'm laughing really hard, that will happen. If I get super excited, that will happen. If I get pissed off, it will happen, you know, going from one extreme to the other really fast. 
I was at, at dinner with my husband tonight and we were eating something that had jalapenos in it and I went from a normal body temperature to I'm hot all of a sudden and I could feel it like splotching up my shoulders and up the side of my neck. And of course, he, he says, it's no big deal, I don't even notice that. So being with him, it normally, if it does flare, it'll just subside. But the reason why I wanted to start this video series is, is because, or channel, I don't really know what, I, what I'm doing here, um, is that I had to get a root canal this morning. I was really uncomfortable going to get that root canal. And um, I'm not super scared of dental work. I just don't like being numb and I don't like my mouth being open for that long. So the endodontist said, well, I do have gas. I can give you gas. And I was like, I'll take it. I felt pretty good. I was in a room where like the window was like the blinds were open. The sun was piercing through. And anytime I get really hot, like the sun's coming through like that in a room, I knew I'm probably going to get really uncomfortable and my body temperature is about to rise. I'm probably going to get red. And I'm at the dentist. So there's that or the endodontist I'm about to get a root canal. There's that. So I lay back and they're putting the gas on me and I'm breathing. And all of a sudden the assistant goes, is that normal for your neck to do that? Luckily, I had the gas on my face because I really didn't give two shits. <laughs> but <clears throat> but I said, yes, yes it is. Any Anytime my, my body goes from a normal temperature to hot and the, the way the sun's coming through that window right now and I'm having a dental procedure done, it makes my, um, it makes my skin react like that. It's almost like I have a reaction to it, but it'll subside, it's no big deal. <clears throat> she was like, okay, because you weren't red like that when you came in, but you are now. I was like, okay. And, and I had the gas on again, so I just really didn't care. But I laid there and I thought about, had I not had that gas on, that would have made me so anxious and so uncomfortable because it's a pointing out of there's something wrong with you. Is everything okay? Which then sends me into a, fri a frizzy of like, ah, frizzy, frenzy, which sends me into a frenzy of, am I okay? So I was able to breathe through that because I had gas on and uh, it took the edge off. But I remember laying there while they were doing the dental, dental procedure and that was still in my head. And I just laid there and I, and I just started talking to my body in my head, not out loud. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what I've done to you and what, what has happened to us. I'm really sorry about that. And I'm going to work to get this undone because you're just reacting to what you know is normal now. So I laid there and obviously I'm getting the edge taken off by this gas. So I start feeling a little emotional and I just thought to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start recording with so much vulnerability. Because one of the things that I do is talk a lot about encouraging women, paving the way, being a pioneer, battle on warrior. There's so many different things that I talk, talk about, but I wanted to be able to come into this new space, not with people that I know around me, but just with the world, with whoever is out there looking for someone that they can relate to, whether it's about chest splotchiness or just being real and being vulnerable or facing the things that make you most afraid. I just wanted to create a space where I could heal myself and maybe in turn help you heal as well because I need to run head first into the thing that is debilitating to me and that is that I am a corporate executive who battles with being in the corporate world. I am a corporate executive who love, I love the job I have right now, but I go many days I usually wear a turtleneck or something that's really high neck just so I don't have to think about it that much but I am very aware of myself and very aware of what I think is this discomfort of you're judging me and you hold this power over me and that's something that I just want to be free from in in my life in corporate in the circles around me and so I want to come here and just be vulnerable and wear shirts that I would never wear out in public or on camera and just face what makes me afraid because I don't want to be afraid of this. Um, I know myself and I know how bold I can be and the courage that I carry, but for some reason there's times throughout my weeks where I'm like, who cares? I don't even care. And there's these other times, probably hormonal throughout my weeks where I feel like I need to go get on medication. I need to get some help. I don't know why this is happening and my head just spins in it. And then again, other times where I'm like, I don't really give a shit. Who cares? Carry on, warrior, carry on. So my advice to people is to run straight into the thing that scares you most. I feel like I should do that same thing because I'm free in, in every area of my life that I know to be free in as of this moment, except for this one area. This is the area 
where I hide myself because I'm afraid of that judgment, I guess. And you ever feel like you know you're kind of debilitated in one area, but you don't want that? Like, I don't know why it still happens and why I still feel so afraid inside of my body because in my mind, that fear is not there. So somewhere these wires are crossed still and I thought maybe if I just start publicly putting myself out here in the most vulnerable way I can in like lower cut shirts, whatever that case may be. And if I do flare up like that, just let it happen and keep talking through it and let you know if this happens to you, you're not alone. But also in an experiment to see, can I heal my body? And, and I owe it to myself to try to heal my body in that way. So I hope you'll come along on this journey with me. And I know this is a long intro of who I am and it's all over the place because I just wanted to get in front of the camera tonight, but let's go on this journey together and let's see where we end up. And if yours is a red splotchy chest or whatever the case may be for you, I think we're gonna do this together and I think we're gonna heal from whatever it is that we've been running from and we really wanna heal from. So um, I look like a little baby doll with these little red cheeks. So it's funny that my chest didn't get as red as it normally does, but my cheeks are so red. That normally does not happen. Um, and I think it is the lighting as well. And I just washed my face. So here I am, I'm April. Here's all of this. This didn't even do as bad as I wanted it to tonight, just to show you. I mean, this lit, this is nothing, Th nothing. Um, it's gonna get so much worse, I can't wait to show you. So, just know you're not alone. Whatever it is that you're, that you're facing and battling, and it's gonna be quite a journey.